All right, guys, welcome back. So I've stuck on my laminations on the front of the aircraft and I'm just now going to cut along the front in the hope that I can separate the two, but this cut has to be pretty spot on. Without further ado, the angle, oops, let me angle you down slightly and I'll give it a go. Here we go. I've sanded it all around as much as I dare. So, oh, well, I'm through. Here we go then. Let's take that off. See what it looks like. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that one. Got to say that went really well. I'm pleased with that. So, so I can now make the hole in the front. I think the hole for the motor is going to be completely within this piece of wood actually, so it's not going to touch that at all, which is quite nice. So, that's the best way of doing that. Okay, just wondering if I had a coin about the right diameter. This is actually. Oh, look at that, smaller, it's for 28. This is a penny, the Queen Victoria on it, dated 1872. 1872 penny there, look. And it's, it's not particularly worn. Weighs quite a bit, 1872. It's a while ago, isn't it? Um, 28. 38, 48, 148 year old coin. My maths is correct. Hopefully it is. Anyway, I'm going to pop it on there. And I'm going to sort of draw a big lazy line around it. Just give me a rough idea. And I'm gonna, she's got a magazine in the post today that I bought on eBay. It's... um. There we are, that, that'll do, isn't it? It's a, uh, I'll show you it. Look at this. Ooh. It's a radio modeler from 1984. Yeah, 1984 radio modeler. And look what it's got inside. Manic biplane. And if I can have a look at it, I bought it just, you know, might give me some information. King of the First World War fighter planes. Uh, 60 inch sports designed for 64 strokes or or 40 to 62 stroke. That's a spelling mistake there yeah, right on the front page. Uh, engines and figure four function, radar control. Ooh. Apparently the prototype Manet model was flown from a helicopter for assessing film potential. And there's an airborne picture of it. Okay. Designed about 16 years ago, the Manic may not come within the veteran or vintage definition, definitions, but like its designer, it is getting a bit long in the tooth. Why resurrect such an old design? For one thing, the model has never lost its popularity and it has been responsible for initiating many modelers to the delights or disease of biplanes. So it says here then that it was 16 years before that, which makes it 1968. That's pretty, uh, it is vintage or veteran now. So, and there's this is funny, look, this one here I'm pointing to. The German Richtover uh, version of the Manic was fitted with a Super 8 Cine camera mounted on a dense foam pad. The results were surprisingly good for such a simple installation. There's a dirty great camera. I was interested to see the cowl they've got there, look, which I've just cut off, of course. What's that engine? Oh, it's an OS I can see on the side. What I like about this, and I, I don't like on mine, is the rounders are already painted on the on the top wing, but they're too far in. I might paint over them, I'll have to see. It is a bit of a character, the charm of it now, I suppose. Shows some uh, quite fancy exhaust stacks here. So I'll put something like that on, because I mentioned I'm going to make them a, the exit holes for the heat from the motor. And then there's a exploded shot of the bare bones 
there we go. I've got one of those. There it is. Should be fun reading through that. Let's crack on. Where was I? What was I doing? Oh yes, I was going to make the hole in the front. Uh, I think I'll make it with my Dremel. And I think I might have to go outside to make it because it's going to make quite a bit of dust. So I'll leave you there for a minute. I'm going to pop outside to the shed, cut that out, cut it out, and I'll be back shortly. I said record video. Oh, you are. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. So what I've done then, I've put some... Um, I've just offered the motor up to uh, check everything's fitting okay. Um, made a slight boo-boo. I had to cut the uh, front former square to get the motor down and in, but I can do for that anyway. I'm sure you won't notice as it flies by. I could glue the little bit back in, but I'll only have to take the motor out some day, so it's probably not a lot of point. So what we got then is the hatch ready to go the motor is sitting in there quite nicely uh, just a couple of degrees of down thrust at most and maybe a couple of degrees right thrust at most and I'll trim it out so um, we're making good progress there so thanks for watching guys uh, and gals and I'll see you in the next video if you're new to all this, like and subscribe to my channel and catch up on the first video of the series. I'm sure you'll be amused. Thanks guys, cheers. Hi guys, just fitted on the fin and rudder and hinged it. Uh, so that's looking pretty cool. And I just want to go outside now and have a go at the uh, cow top and front former. Figured I might just tissue it, tissue and dope it actually because um, I've got some tissue and dope well because the curves at the front are, are a little bit too tight to start filming around and get a nice uh, flat finish so I'm going to use tissue and dope okay so check in later cheers bye hello guys back again I'm going to have a go at covering the fin I found some old covering it's uh, cover right says here your iron has to I've never used it before um, it says here your iron has to be pretty damn hot I've pushed it right up correct temperature is 350 to 375 this is almost 100 degrees higher than required for plastic films at this temperature the fabric will steam oh, my iron now. okay so here we're gonna go so I've never used this stuff before so I think I cut that for that side. Fits a bit better. Let's just see if it tacks. Well, that's stuck okay. About 350 degrees. Oops, a bit hot. Doesn't matter that it doesn't match the colour because it's all going to be painted anyway. Um, these suitable First World War type colour scheme dark green, beige, sort of thing. I think it's sticking pretty well, so we'll kind of crack on. Let's just stick it down all around. Of course, how it shrinks is going to be another, another. Yeah, they're right. It does steam. Good. Covering material that's steamed before.
Well, that's actually stuck really well. So uh, I'm going to move it out of the way a minute. I'm going to stick it to the frame and take that out of the way. Let's pop that in there. Obviously, I'm not going to shrink it out at this stage. Uh, that's the bottom bit. That doesn't need to be scalpel. That's the bit I need. Oops. Not very well prepared, am I? Move that plastic bit out of the way. I just want to cut that flush with the bottom of there. usual with this stuff. Covering materials you need a sharp blade if you're to stand any chance at all cutting it without tearing it. Okay <coughs> let's uh, continue just wrapping it around. Well, I've got to say, that actually has gone on very nicely indeed. It's not tightened out. Oops, let's cut the, uh, let's cut the next piece out and uh, go in. Is that cut? Yes, it's not too bad. Finish that off. You see it steaming. <laughs> All right. I think I'm ready to tighten it out. So let's give it a. Shall I use the heat gun? Now let's try this. the other side equally. Oh crumbs shrunk along the bottom. It's not a disaster because although it's pulled it's pulled away from the bottom, hopefully these wrinkles will come out. It's pulled away from the bottom but uh, that's quite good because the tail plane it wants to glue in the slot so it's revealed a bit of balsa wood which I was going to cut out anyway, cut away anyway. And this side's pretty much done the same thing which is unusual because I suppose the heat, the heat has melted the glue. What if I should knock it down a little bit to stretch it out? 
think I might, you know. I'm going to knock it down to, it's going at 220C, I'll knock it down to, leave a stretch where it won't, I'll half it, I think, make it about 110. Okay, let's just try tightening out again. I'll try it from this side. Whoa, that must be under some tension. Oh, that's taken out right out. Look at that. Right, what I'm going to do then is to stick that to that center rib to give it a bit more strength. Same with that side. pretty tight guys I'm uh, happy with that I can say I'm happy with that should we offer it into the tailplane just to see how it looks yeah. hey look at that look at that sir one fin and tail beautiful Beautiful. Okay. I haven't cut the last side out for the rudder yet, so we'll do that next. I'm going to take it down a little bit now to put down to 196 and cooling. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that's pulled out all right. Oh, 
right I think I'm just been a little bit over fussy there so that's the rudder done I'm quite happy with that that's fin and rudder come out quite nicely I can't hinge it yet because I've got to stick the tail plane on first before I do it's going to get really unwieldy isn't it unwieldy so I've got to finish off any little details I'm going to do on the um, fuselage first uh, I've still got to make a headrest for the pilot and oh did you see this sure I showed you so I've tissue covered the, the hatch and the nose and that'll all paint in nicely so that's tissue covered gets rid of all the grain tissue and dope good old tissue and dope um, so that's what the nose is going to look like blunt still got to make the exhaust stacks and the machine gun the headrest the windshield and put in the uh, snakes control rods for the um, rudder and elevator and I've also got to think of a method for retaining the cowling I'll probably go for a dowel at the back cowling what I'm talking about hatch probably go for a peg at the back and a magnet on the front make it nice and easy yeah so a few little nice jobs to do as I call them Dope. Okay, so put that down over there a minute and I've got an idea what I'm going to use for the machine gun. Uh, I'm going to use the same method I used for making uh, the machine gun, uh, sorry the engine, straight six cylinder engine on my Torb and that is just paper tubes basically. So that actually looks quite good as well, doesn't it? It's the same area. <laughs> Except it doesn't go like that. It goes like that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Better get it right. It goes like that. Okay. Fin and rudder covered. Nice and easy. That's that done. So I'm going to get on with these other little bits. Or at least start making up some paper tubes. And I'll start recording that in a moment. Just pop that away. So thanks very much for looking in. Uh, like and subscribe. What's that button do? Yeah, like and subscribe uh, the video. Something I always say. But it'd be good if you guys could subscribe. I'd appreciate it. It's always um, good for the old uh, YouTube analytics. So, yeah. It's coming on quite nicely. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. These glasses are dreadful, aren't they? I'll see you next time anyway.